Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tell Your Story. I'm your host, Todd Nesloni, and each week I look to bring you a different guest who has encouraged, inspired, or challenged me in one way or another and bring them on to share some of their story in hopes that it inspires you to tell some of yours. I'm thrilled for this week's guest. I've got Chase Vaughn with me on today. Chase, kind of tell everybody who you are. Hi, everybody. Uh, Great to be here. Thank you, Todd, uh, for having me. My name is Chase Vaughn. I have been in public education for 13 years. I now work for an ed tech company called BoardWorks, and I've followed you, Todd, for a long time on Twitter. So uh, excited to be here and, and, and chat with you today. Awesome. Well, Chase, you know, anytime I have these conversations, I always start with the same first question, and that is when you were a kid dreaming of what you were going to be when you grow up, does it align at all with anything you're doing now? Great question. Uh, I would say, yeah, it actually does. Absolutely. As a kid, I was heavily influenced by my coaches. I was a football and basketball track, and uh, I loved my relationship with them. And so I always envisioned myself working with people. And when I got to college, one of my friends, who's an assistant principal in Plano ISD, uh, became a football coach while I was going down kind of this business track and uh, I got super jealous. I went and watched him coach one time and he was with kids and was doing great and was telling stories and laughing. And I was like, man, I, I got to do that. And so I reversed course within six months, got my certification and then was a, was a coach and a teacher in uh, Coppell ISD uh, the next year. I love that. Well, you know, what I love about your journey too is at some point during your career as an educator, you decide to kind of take a risk and step out and try something new. Well, how did those doors begin to open? Yeah, like with anything, I think you hit it the nail on the head. I think risk taking is is the key. Uh, calculated risk taking is the key. You can't be you can't be scared to do it. And what's great about Texas is. Uh, if people are willing to work hard and they want to be with kids and they want to do right and they want to teach, the opportunities are endless. You know, we're always hiring great teachers across Texas. So at least in that field. And so it was really easy. Uh, it was I, I did it in 2007 when it was pretty easy to get alternative certified. I went through a community college and made it happen. And that's kind of led me to where I am today. And so now you've got board works. So for those who may not have heard about that, tell me how that came to be. Yeah, so I I joined BoardWorks a little over a year ago. Uh, So BoardWorks provides interactive content that's aligned to the TEKS across the four core subjects that's really, really support teachers to get the most out of their technology. And uh, just kind of stumbled upon it, um, was connected with our our U.S. director. We had some good conversations and I, you know, my whole career from being a, a football coach to becoming an administrator and now working with BoardWorks, the common theme in that was that I enjoy the most, that I get the most satisfaction out of is, is supporting and helping others. Mm-hmm. And ultimately joining BoardWorks helps me do that more directly with teachers by supporting them with great content. So that's what really attracted me to it. You know, I love what you said there though about helping and supporting others is, is where your passion lies. Because, you know, I think for those of us, and I can relate to that, because for those of us that are like that, some people look at us and go, oh, well, don't you miss the classroom? And I look at them and go, oh, I'm still in a type of classroom. Like what I loved being a teacher was seeing that light bulb come on and solving a problem and helping kids. And then I got to do that as an adult, as a, as a principal. And now I get to do that with all the other things I'm doing. I'm with TEPSA. And so for me, it's like I'm still in the classroom. It looks different and the expectations are different, but I'm still getting to do what I love and helping people. And so do you ever look back and think, you know, maybe one day I might go back? Yeah, great, great question. So uh, first of all, I, I would agree with what you just said, 100%. In fact, I would say I felt as an administrator, and then when I was a football coach as like a defensive coordinator, when I got into some leadership positions, I felt like I almost had more of an impact because I found myself working with adults that are working with kids on a, on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I got great satisfaction out of that, watching them impact kids. Um, didn't, didn't, doesn't take away from the fact that I loved it in my own classroom. But it just, I don't know, there's something felt better about working with people and watching them grow and build their capacity and then them impact kids. But as far as going back, uh, I mean, never say never. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I never know. Uh, right now, I'm happy where I'm at. It's a great, I get to interact with superintendents and really support them and their teachers and curriculum directors and principals and do PD and, and, and all that fun stuff. So I'm really enjoying it. But I love education. Uh, I'll be in education my entire career. 
And whether that's board works for 50 years or back in public ed, who knows? We'll see where, where life goes. I love that answer. Well, you know, reflecting again back on your youth, what kind of student were you? Did you enjoy school? Yeah, I did. I, I love school. I, I love school for the social aspect for sure. Now, my, my grades are always good. You know, I, I graduated from Plano East and it was, you know, there's IB there. It was super competitive, so, probably some of the same issues that we see now in high schools across Texas, uh, just with the kind of GPA rat race yeah. that uh, just stresses kids out. Um, but I, I did well. I did well enough academically, but I, I really uh, enjoyed the connections with my teachers, my friends. And uh, that's why I love going to school every day. You know, something that I'm always interested to hear from people too is, you know, you, you're you one that is balancing a bunch of different things. And, you know, when you throw COVID in there, it adds a whole nother level of balance. And so I'd love to kind of know how you balance thing, balance life and family and work and everything else. Cause you know, I know nobody does it perfectly. We all make it work however we can make it work for us, but how do you keep balance? Yeah, man, it's, it's a lot of intentional proactive steps. Cause I, I know, I know my limits. Like I, I know I, I want to do a good job and sometimes my desire to be successful and to do a good job, whether that's supporting teachers or connecting with this district or whatever, can take away from other good things like I should be having dinner with my family or I, I other stuff that I enjoy. So I'm intentional about setting boundaries. Like on my phone, I don't I don't receive notifications on my email. I have to actually go to my email. I have it hidden. So I have to be intentional about checking it. It's not going to interrupt me. Um, I try not to sleep with my phone. Uh, so phone can be a big distraction. Yeah. I, I've, I've become more comfortable with saying no. So when I was a teacher and I was a coach, I was a people pleaser. And in my first year as an assistant principal, I was still a people pleaser. And as you know, as an administrator, that, that can cause issues. I mean, we all yeah. want to make people happy, but sometimes you got to have some boundaries for the best of everybody. And so I've become more comfortable with saying no and, and being intentional about maximizing my time while I'm at work and then maximizing my time while I'm at home and not letting the two always cross. Now, we live in a digital age, and sometimes I have to do work at seven or sometimes I have to do work at nine, and that's okay. But if I'm doing that, then the next morning I'm going to take my kid to school. I'm going to eat breakfast with my family and spend that extra time with them. I love that. That's, that's such a really good, well-rounded answer. Um, and you said something in there that kind of stood out to me. You know, your first year as an AP, trying to be that people pleaser, and I remember oh. that you know that jump from a teacher to an administrative role is so weird and awkward, and you have to learn so many things. But I'd love to kind of know, you know, when did you realize that those leadership positions were things that were positions that were meant for you or that you could jump into? Because I, I feel like everybody's got a different light bulb moment when they're like, I might want to try that. Like, was there something that you remember that was like kicking into gear? Of, I might be good at that. Yeah, great question, Todd. And, and the answer to that is absolutely. I. I remember it vividly. I, uh, so I, I got into education because I wanted to coach. And I think there's a lot of people that are similar background to me, pretty typical, um, that wanted to coach, especially in Texas, coach football. And as I started progressing in that, in that career, I, I worked my way up into a leadership position within the coaching world. I was a defensive coordinator. And part of the role as a defensive coordinator is training and coaching your coaches on your staff, my defensive side of the staff. And I love that we got we I was part of hiring new coaches. I was part of of, you know, building capacity in new coaches, teaching them drills. And immediately I, I made that connection between what I was doing as a defensive coordinator in the game of football and to what, you know, leaders do on a bigger scale across the district. And as soon as I got that taste, that's just that's just something that I love. And so I was like, I got to be administrator. And so, um, I, you know, I missed the coaching aspect for sure. But it wasn't the coaching. I mean, it wasn't, I love the game of football, but that's not what drove me. It was uh, growing and, and growing capacity in others, if you will. And it was just kind of revealed through football. And then I eventually became an administrator because of it. I love that. Well, you know, one thing that I found as an administrator and as someone who's active on social media, sometimes what can get the best of you in those two worlds is the um, the – gift of comparison of looking mm -hmm. at other people and thinking, man, I want to be as good as them or why isn't this opportunity opening up or, or you get in that whole headspace and, and doubt begins to take root. And so how do you personally keep doubt at bay and keep yourself from comparing yourself to others? Oh my gosh, man, you're hitting, you're hitting hard. Uh, that that's a daily struggle. I mean, mm -hmm. it's still a struggle. I, I think, and I think anyone, 
anyone who doesn't say that doesn't cross their mind from time to time, uh, I mean, if that's the case, then you're truly blessed. Yeah. You know, I, I heard a quote before. <laughs> I forgot where it comes from, and I'm sure it's a common quote, but comparisons that is a, is a thief of joy. Mm -hmm. And it, it really is. Uh, I think a lot of times we can get caught up in comparison. Well, why am I not a principal yet? Or how do I become a superintendent? Why am I not working at the district level? Or how come I'm not in this ed tech job and I should be working for this company or whatever? And uh, you miss the opportunities that are right in front of you. So again, just like boundaries, uh, I think it is a daily discipline to understand who you are, where your identity comes from. You know, for me, that's, that's comes from my faith and my religion, really my faith, I should say, but for others, it may be something else and that's fine. That's them, but know who you are, where your identity is. And if I remind myself about my identity, it really helps me understand that where I am is where I'm supposed to be. And, um, doesn't mean you don't have your eyes open. I think a lot of times you can go too far the other direction where you're like, no, I need to be where my feet are, which you should be. But at the same time, you, you're talented, you're working hard, and there's some aspirations you have. There's nothing wrong with exploring that at the same time. And so again, like if anything, it's a balance. You know, I love what you said there, though, about when you're so focused on comparing yourself to others, you miss opportunities that are right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is such a great reminder that we're often so focused on what's ahead that we miss what's right here, right now, in the moment now. So I, I love that answer. You know, when you think about your journey into becoming the man you are today and you reflect on the many, many people who played a part, who is someone that really stands out to you that was really instrumental into creating the man we see today? Oh man, there's been so many. Uh, and if I, any family or friends are listening and you are not mentioned, I said there were many. I just asked him for one. So don't be offended anybody that's related to Chase who's listening. That's so funny. Kyle, I'm gonna, it's not a cop out, it's the truth, but I'm, I'm gonna throw out just two really quickly. First is my wife and I, we have known each other since we were 15. Oh, wow. Went to high school together. And um, I would say all a lot of the, qualities that have been refined that I, that I'm always trying to refine and get better at, but just a lot of who I am today as a, as a person, as a leader really comes from her and the home and, and, and things that we've talked about. You know, there's been a lot of, when you've been with someone, I'm 36 now. So when you've been with someone for, you know, 21 years, stuff gets revealed, your selfishness and your good things. And it kind of refines you into who you are. Yeah. So I'd say my wife, number one, and number two, my dad, my dad and I are super close. Um, and a lot of the values that I think translates to good leadership, I learned in the home as a young kid, uh, sometimes the hard way, but yeah. definitely learned in the home. I love it. Well, Chase, as we wrap this conversation up, I always end with the same question as well. And that is, you know, I believe as people, we, there are so many things that we hold true to our hearts and are, and are the foundation of who we are. And so for anybody listening or watching today, if they're only going to walk away with one thing, what is your one thing for them? Geez, um, if you're going to walk away one thing, uh, just try to enjoy where you are right now. We, we hit on it earlier. Sometimes it's so easy to be distracted with what's going on, what you want, what you wish. But a lot of times what you have in front of you is, is, is where you are. And so enjoy the moment. Plan for the future, but enjoy the moment and um, be grateful for what you do have and what you got going on. I love it. Well, Chase, I have so enjoyed this conversation. And thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Tell Your Story. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. Thanks, Todd. And thank you, everybody, for listening or watching another episode. Remember, you can check out all the past episodes on your favorite streaming site or YouTube. I hope today's conversation with Chase has encouraged you to get out there and tell your story because every story matters.